What this means is that in biology and medicine, we test hypotheses. Does sleeping more help uh, your brain feel better? Um, does taking a certain vitamin make, make you healthy or not? These are yes, no questions that you can answer, but this does not provide a platform for you to engineer an outcome. And so currently in biology and medicine, a lot of the effort to try to develop a new drug, for example, is based on a treasure hunting model. You, based on various cues, you try and find clues to come up with something uh, uh, that might work, but there is no systematic way to engineer it. And so the question of what would it take to define the future and transform the biology and medicine comes down to, can we build an engineering platform for biology and medicine? So to, just to give you an example, um, the top 10 pharma companies' current market cap, even though we talk about a lot of these pharma companies that have uh, really large profit, uh, make a lot of the drugs that we currently use, None of the companies reach a trillion dollar valuation like we see in the uh, IT space. This is largely because of the fact that uh, the drug development, even though it's a very profitable business and it makes, um, they have exclusive rights to a lot of the drugs, because of the fact that these are based on a treasure hunting model, the fact that you have very valuable drugs right now doesn't guarantee that you will be able to make a new drug for the future because you have to be in the game of treasure hunting altogether. But if someone draws a clock like number 10, does that person have Alzheimer's disease? If they draw a clock like number one, do they have Alzheimer's disease? You can see that there is something wrong with the person once you start to uh, go down the scale. But this is definitely not uh, good enough to understand what the state of your uh, brain is. And so despite the fact that this is such an important problem, we don't know what it is that we need to solve, and therefore we have no solutions. And so, so far, how many drugs do we have in Alzheimer's disease space to be able to modify the disease? Any guesses among the few of you that are here? We have exactly zero. And uh, the latest failure was uh, in 2019, last year, by Biogen, where many of the large pharma companies have left the space because of the repeated failures and large investments, while Biogen last year uh, failed the clinical trial, and this wiped out 18 billion from their market value. And this drug was not going to cure our Alzheimer's disease, even if it succeeded, and yet, just the expectation of something that might be able to work uh, had a market value of $18 billion. And even the most exciting new treatments that are uh, going through clinical trials have uh, the effect of this is the group that received the drug, and this is the group that didn't, and there is a little bit of difference in the cognitive score. That is what we are looking to achieve when you say there is an exciting new treatment. In my opinion, this is because of the fact that we are completely ignoring the fact that the brain is a circuit in the effort to both diagnose and find treatment for the disease. The brain, in no doubt, is a circuit, and this is not a debated fact. This is a known fact. And this means that the brain has integrated circuit components uh, integrated together to control our behavior. And so in order to understand what is going on, we need to know what the circuit function is. And the main objective of treating brain disorders is to restore the brain function. Your goal of treating neurological disease is not to remove plaques. If you removed all the plaques that were in the brain and the brain doesn't function where you still can't remember anything or you still have a tremor, that's not a cure. The cure by definition for brain disease is that you have to restore the function to its normal state. And so in a mathematical term, it means your objective function is the normalization of brain circuit function, while your different variables might be to reduce plaques or reduce inflammation or many other things that are under investigation. But we are currently not using any of it to diagnose or treat neurological disease because of the fact that this is very difficult to measure. So given this fact, what do we need to do then to measure this and utilize this for neurological disease control? 
there are two things from the perspective of an engineer uh, to be able to try and address this problem. One is, in order to take control of the system, it, you need one thing, that is the brain interface. You need an input-output system that can communicate with the system so that you can start to manipulate it. You can think of this as a keyboard or a USB that you plug into your computer. Another very important aspect is that just because you have an interface doesn't mean you can fix your computer. Just like that, what you need to do, you need to know in order to take control of our brain is to have algorithmic access to the brain function where you have to be able to understand the system architecture uh, underneath it to be able to read and write uh, codes, algorithms associated with the brain. And interestingly, uh, there was an interesting announcement uh, regarding building improved I.O. system recently by Neuralink in 2020, uh, August 28, where Elon Musk, that all of you know, uh, has announced an input-output device uh, that is commercially made, uh, along with a surgical robot to implant this device. And they've demonstrated that in a pig, they can put these I.O. device and record from various neurons. There has been many efforts to develop these input output device and that are being used in various labs, uh, but this was a first commercial attempt to make something uh, that can uh, be easily implanted into the brain. But as I said, um, oh, and also input output device currently exists in clinics uh, where it's being used. It's not as many channels as the one that Elon Musk showed. But for example, this is a clinical input-output device that uses four different channels to pulse signals into the brain. It's called the deep brain stimulator. Uh, where these deep brain stimulators are currently clinically used, where you implant the device into the brain and pulse current to restore our brain function, and it's most prominently used in Parkinson's disease and also in uh, epilepsy, uh, where what you do is through this device, you pulse currents to normalize uh, your brain function. However, these things are currently done in an empirical fashion. We're not putting in this I.O. device because we know exactly what to do. It's kind of like having a TV and like hitting it or trying to shock it to see if it will start working. It actually sometimes works and sometimes you can uh, manage, but without knowing exactly how your system works, uh, this can often be a very uh, difficult task where many of the companies that pursue new uh, electroceuticals, this is what a lot of the time it's called, uh, pursue these electroceuticals, often have to go through hundreds of millions of dollars trial, uh, which leads to minimal improvements or fails at different times. And so ideally, like I said, I.O. is not enough. We need to be able to understand the algorithm to precisely engineer what we want to achieve. And for the first time in 2017, my lab has been able to reconstruct a cell type specific whole brain circuit code algorithm, where in this case, the circuits called the D1 medium spiny neuron and D2 medium spiny neuron related circuits, these are critical circuits, for example, in Parkinson's disease, and you can see that now we can reconstruct how these specific cell types uh, interact with the whole brain in order to create the behaviors of interest. And once we have a large scale interaction map of how things are working together, we could then also model things at a single cell level. In the brain, there's large scale communication that is happening, but also on a single neuronal level, they are giving codes in 0, 1, just like in our computers, although the architecture is very significantly different. Uh, and now that we have the overall scale of um, algorithm, we can now also model things at a single neuronal level, which allows us to understand what algorithm is executed in controlling our behavior. Also, very importantly, in our recent study, we also saw that uh, the code our goal is to restore the code to normal. But we also wanted to understand, okay, our goal was to restore the code, but is there any relationship between the code and the hardware defects that you see in the brain? Because one of the biggest things that in neurodegenerative disease that people look at and try to do is to figure out why you have these different plaques, these hardware defects that accumulate in the brain, and how to clear it. Very interestingly, what we have found is that the code change 
also changes the pathology. Once we restore the function to normal, it allows you to also um, clear up some of the hardware defects that is happening. And so with this, it also allows us to understand that the software restoration is not only a goal, but it also cleans the hardware. And interestingly, what I want to note is that we are now starting to decode the brain circuit algorithms, which means that we can start to build an engineering platform for the brain. So biohealthcare needs to move from treasure hunting to systems engineering approach in order to uh, define the future of where this needs to go. And interestingly, um, when I was in Korea last time, uh, very recently in July of 2020, SK Biofarm IPO'd at a close to uh, around $20 billion valuation. And this is an amazing success that uh, uh, many celebrated. But one thing that's not necessarily discussed is the fact that something like this took 20 years of treasure hunting to get this drug approved. However, once we have an engineering platform for the brain that can enable system engineering for discovering neurologic and, and psychiatric disease treatment, we may no longer need to do this treasure hunting and move away from this model where the treasure hunting is not necessarily done even without a compass or maybe a hint of a map. And so I'm gonna show you a brief video of uh, what we're able to do um, as an example. Uh, you can take things like uh, brain signals and find important events through AI technology that are clinically relevant. And once you find the important events, you can directly understand what the network activity underlying uh, the disease is. And once you can directly visualize uh, the network mechanisms associated with it, you can predict what sort of therapy will have what outcome and also design new therapy against uh, what you are able to visualize directly. And we are starting this, developing these solutions uh, for epilepsy, but we are also expanding it to many other diseases at this point. And our goal is to bring digital innovation to neurohealth. Everybody wants a quick solution. You want a magic vial of drug that says, okay, here you're gonna cure Alzheimer's disease, for example. The World Knowledge Forum.